Welcome back to Fallen London. I was just about to start recording Mahogany Hall when I realized that I had more to say about the Dillman Club. I'm afraid that there's still more to be said about it, so that's going to be going off into its own opportunities file. You don't get to see it just yet. And as to Mahogany Hall, well, I'd really like to do it, but here's the thing. I have these really irritating opportunities that keep showing up because I haven't done the Velocipede Squad yet. And I think that I have to do it because they're driving me crazy. They show up all the time. I don't have enough cards in my deck, in my hand to hold them. I just need, I need to get through that. So, it's time to become more dangerous and to check out what we've got in the Velocipede Squad. Do we really not have a dangerous hand? Of course we do. Wow, my dangerous outfit is completely broken. <laughs> How's that? I must have turned it into a BDR outfit. Uh, what have we got as a weapon right now? Our facial scar? Oh, that's fun. That's a better watchful weapon than we had before since we changed our profession. I think that's already as dangerous as we've got, right? Dangerous 5, dangerous 6. And she is certainly our dangerous pet. Our companion. She's no pet. So... Over to the Velocipede Squad. A little chat with the inspector. He stubs out his cigar irritably. This may also be the story where we learn a little bit more about Jack of Smiles. He points to a box file overflowing with paper. It's labeled Jack of Smiles. Our turn at it. We need to have an edda about Jack. On the case. The knuckle scarred inspector picks up the box with a grunt and heaves it over to us. I'm gutted that I have to do this to you, but there we go. Jack of Smiles is your case now. Maybe you'll be the one to crack it. Most likely you end up Jack, though. If truth be told, I don't much fancy me chances against you. But I'll tell you this. If we have to bring you down, it'll be hard and quick. It's not much, but it's all I can promise. The inspector points at the case file. You already know most what's in there. But working on the squad, you're ought to uncover new stuff. And you might think about heading out and about and see who knows about Jack. It's a desperate business. He's becoming Australian. It's a desperate business, but I reckon there's folks who know someone. Build up our seeking the next breakthrough on the Jack case to four and turn to Lady Bones Road. We can gain it by working on the squad or taking opportunities to train with London's various factions. We're hunting the notorious Jack of Smiles. So how do we actually get to the squad? There, there was a treadmill that was the squad, and it was not very impressive. Maybe this is it. Uh, maybe maybe it's a treadmill that's not sectioned off into its IC. So that, that treadmill's actually just here in Lady Bones, it appears. It's not segregated off into its own special carousel. That's interesting. It was one of the first, I think. Warming up to the case. Jack of Smiles. Warming up to the case. We've got nothing, of course. The murderous buffoon plaything of the press and London's most notorious killer. And now, our problem. I can't not flip the cards. Yeah, you don't need to see that. That one's boring. So, we need to do these. Foil footpads, foil robbery, in the boozer with the lads, and messenger duty. The Velocipede squad looks to its own ranks for couriers. Half the time, when we see one of the squad peddling like the clappers, they're summoning reinforcements or reporting to the masters. Our turn today. Our name is scrawled on the blackboard in the smoke-filled back room of the station. Best mount up. We failed. Well, field garden to wool stack in 20 minutes. Someone's having a laugh. We pedal like a maniac. That was loud. We pedal like a maniac, scattering gowned scholars and the urchins of spite behind us. We squeal to a halt outside the wool stack station, five minutes late, and with a burning pain in our thighs. Well, maybe we need to go and grind up our dangerous a bit. We'll see how annoying it gets. Waking the blue beast. There's a riot in Field Garden. Well, it might be a party that's spilled onto the streets. In any case, the knuckle-scarred inspector orders us to loop, up, loop around all the stations between Lady Bones Road and Spite, whistle blaring. Our oily iron rims strike sparks on the cobblestones as we rouse London's finest away from their kettles and to their business. Urchins and vagabonds slink into their alleys as the blue beast wakes. Onward. I wonder if there are rare successes that give the jack quality. In the boozer with the lads, 
The Velocipede Squad drinks at the new justice. Oh, that's interesting. Connected constables challenge. The Velocipede Squad, yes. Outside Velocipedes are parked in a neat row, ready for action. Inside, the floors stuck at our boots and the copper scowl slip, scowl and sup. What's going on in the snug? A pair of veteran officers are having a private discussion in a small, smoky room. The bonus scheme. Six months and a mount. Keep me head down till then. God bless the bonus. <laughs> I don't know. He's, he's from New York, apparently. He's come over here. God bless the bonus scheme. Remember the minister in that unlicensed brothel last month? That ladybird of an inspector took more than his share. But I still made more out than all last year's bonuses. Gonna get a little place out near Wine Wound. Gonna keep bees. So there may actually be another option now on messenger duty, because that one had an option that was unlocked with one. Nope, not yet. Few respect the badge is our quality. <laughs> Foil a robbery. Two villains are doing over a fancy jeweler's in Field Garden. Mount up and nick em before they scarper. Get to it. This is it. Smoke and fog in our hair. Panicked screams of pedestrians. A mission of justice. Velocipede squad foiled. We suck. The turn in the burly street is sharper than the devil's steak knife. We lean into it further. Further. And our velocipede slides out from beneath us, straight into the wheels of a brewer's dray. Our fall is cushioned by an amply padded theatrical critic. But the inspector isn't going to be pleased. I like that we gain progress even when we fail, though. How it's supposed to be done. Our iron rims slam against the curb as we take the sharp bend out of Burley Street. Or over the handlebars, but up again in a moment, trunching out. The two thieves are still in the shop, one cursing at a tricky safe. We stride in and administer the swift and thorough kicking of justice. Many satisfying thuds and crunches later, we drag them back to the station, behind our velocipede. Onward. <laughs> so we've got nothing yet. What if we go and aggressively fail at this? Uh, no. Let's go to the carnival real quick and see if we can't uh, improve our relationship with these dudes. Would they be at the big time? I believe cops must be at the sideshows, right? They certainly are not reputable people. No, oh, maybe the big top. Ah, we can deepen our acquaintance. Good. Acquainted. Come on, London. Meet some constables we know. They're interviewing the sword swallower. I think we've read this once before, but... Suddenly cooperative, the constables tip their helmets to us and get chatting about business. We eye the sword swallower as we talk. Haven't we seen her before? We have. Outside the brass embassy, and she's seen us. She's obviously not eager for us to tell the constables that. She breaks into the conversation hurriedly with a stream of useful information about criminal activities. The constables scramble to get out their notebooks. The conversation's cut short, but they're obviously grateful for our help. I'll leave you guys out as I repeat this unless there's another kind of success. Ah, uh, well, we couldn't go any further, and unfortunately, we still only have a 10% chance of success here. Not getting along. Two pints later, we're sitting on our own. The ale tastes like someone dropped a rat in it. From the sly smirks around the tap room, they may have. Alright, so I believe there's a new option in the boozer now, though, right? Wasn't it only one to three? Oh, spinning of the wheels, I see. So, on the on the job with the squad is... So we're gonna, I'm gonna repeat this until I get a success. I wanna see it. Looks like uh, we got high enough up there that we can no longer do that. Wait. Wait, where did where'd the Velocipede Squad go? Ah, oh, it's down here. I see. It went below these things instead of above them. So, a bunch of new options. Rescue an informer from Devils, one of the inspector's most productive informants. A waiter at Dante's Grill has blown his cover. We need to repair his reputation. Dante's Grill is just around the corner from Concord Square. Getting off lightly, we cashed, crashed through the elegant stained glass doors and into the dining room. We point a finger. We accuse. We swagger. We take the waiter outside with the scrubbed cobblestones for a corrective kicking. To the scrubbed cobblestones. We drag him back to the station. We wash the blood from our knuckles as the inspector nods his approval. The bruises will heal. The devils had something more permanent in mind.
Let's see. A blaze in spite. Some local villain has set matches to a tenement building in spite. The blaze is yet to spread beyond a few rooms. Well, that's a very patient fire. Speed over there. Someone else will have to deal with the fire. We're after the arsonist. What's all this then? The stinking black smoke blinds us. The flames drive us back. The tenement creaks and pops alarmingly. It won't be long before the place collapses, but what's this? The hot metal sears our fingers, but we have the evidence. Right where the fire started. A constable's badge. Yeah, as I recall, the moral of this story is just that the constables are really terrible people. Which was... We knew that all along, didn't we? Dealing with a hard case. The knuckle-scarred inspector has a stone-faced recidivist who won't talk. Hmm... He wants us to sort the fellow out. Uh, why don't we just talk to him? The stone-faced recidivist glares suddenly through the iron bars of the cell door. Maybe we can do better. Nothing to be done. He knows that his brief will be here soon, and he knows better than to deliberately provoke members of the squad. He sits and waits and stays silent. Our words slide over him like the hollow street fog. Well, we're not role-playing, usually. The squad crushes crime. Innocence may rest easier. A little talk in the back of the station. They question the suspect in the quiet back rooms of the station where the constables outside the Velocipede squad won't interfere. A few hours later, four hours later, our knuckles are bruised and our cuffs badly stained with blood. He won't be able to talk for a while now, but at least the inspector nods his approval at our thoroughness. Did we murder him? What if you walk away? Oh, we gained steadfast. Nice. Oh, but it dropped. Shit. Well, we need that. The inspector shakes his head sadly. You'll never make a bleeding copper if you won't put in the boot when it's needed. Yeah, well, that won't do. We, we need to blend. Having a lark, a band of well-dressed robbers is preying on society events. It's the stouts. They strut about stealing watches and jewelry, then ride off on fine horses. After them, the robbers have struck an elegant party in Field Garden. On your bone shaker, and off like the clappers. A sudden pain in the knee. We cannot possibly keep up with a well-bred horse, cantering gaily across Tyrant's Gardens. Or can we? No, we cannot. Well, okay. I'll just keep going until we're ready to continue. Oh, not so funny now. Right, of course, with the success. We pedal after the fleeing horses like a champion. It's hard to steer our contraption while holding a firearm. Our iron rims cut furrows in the smooth brown turf of Tyrant's Gardens. We chance a shot at the last of the fleeing riders, who wheels around, horrified. He loses his seating and plummets to the ground in an elegant heap. It's not a hardened criminal. More likely, he's one of the young stags out of the lark. Oh, right, the young stags and the stoats are different. We are a stag. The university has stoats. That won't spare him the sound thrashing he's owed, though. All right, we'll be back when there's new options. The Jack of Smiles case. It squats on our desk like a box of serpents. There's actually quite a few options here, or several options at least. But we're going to focus on Jack. It's in our, It squats on our desk like a box of serpents. How are we going to do this the hard way? The Velocipede Squad's preferred method. Get out there and chase Jack down. Shout other coppers to get out of our way. Intimidate the occasional witness. In short, put the boot in. No, the clever way. The detective's methods. We've eliminated the impossible. The improbable will probably stab you. Emerging patterns. We mark our almanac with a day's attack. With the days, at with the day's attacks happen. I see. We place pins on our map to mark the places where Jack struck. We interview bewildered victims and excitable witnesses. We look over the physical evidence again and again. Blood, corpses, hiding places, knives. A pattern. It's a tiny, pale thing, and one cruel fact could kill it. But it is a pattern. It will lead us somewhere. Jack's days are numbered. Oh, we should have done the dangerous option. Looks like that was a big boost. Ah, oh, well. We saw more text. So now it's just to repeat that until such time as we are ready to solve the case. Uh, what, how I mean it? Four. Well, likely be a while before we can progress the story properly. As is the way of Fallen London at the higher levels. When this content was first released, there was, uh... The Jack part was not in it, as I recall. So it was just going around the Velocipede Squad over and over. And, uh, so that's that for now. We'll be back later. It looks like we've got nothing new in here. We will be able to check out the hard way. 
the Velocipede Squad's preferred method. Get out there and chase Jack down. Shout at other coppers to get out of our way. Intimidate the occasional witness. In short, put the boot in. Well, that was worth, yeah, some dangerous. Jack's days. Jack glances about Spite Market and slowly draws the long carving knife. But we're behind his shoulder. Jack lopes across a roof field garden rooftop, unaware he's being followed. Jack hides in a coal cellar near the university, but knows that we'll find him before the lamps are lit. A little closer every day. We're going to crack this. Oh, we got a lot more for the dangerous approach than the watchful one. I believe that that's enough for us to actually make a breakthrough. Warming up Jack's case. Now he's our problem. Number 37. There's a page in the Jack of Smiles case notes that bears the signature of each officer to lead the investigation. 37 signatures once ours is added. Is that enough? Will there be a 38th? Looking over the notes as we are now. A tiny breakthrough. Bodies and knives and blood and reports. We've never seen such a pile about one case. The box the inspector gave us was just the first volume. The rest is delivered to our lodgings by cart. What's behind Jack? What is it that 36 previous detectives couldn't see? We work through the night and back into the day. Our room becomes a library, a shrine devoted to a killer who can give fresh smiles to a pub full of burly sailors one day and be fought off by a nanny with an umbrella the next. What's this, though? Unique in the case notes, a Jack was caught alive and was pronounced cured and then released. The whole business was hushed up and forgotten. Most of the notes are missing. There's no name, no address. It must have been someone important. There's a date, eight years ago. Are they still in London? We must speak to them, whoever they are. Back soon. Well, what's this? I was just doing opportunities prepping to come back to you, delicious friends, and I noticed that the urchins have Jack on the roof. I guess there was mention that connected qualities can help you with it, wasn't there? An urchin in a panic leaps down from a nearby rooftop, a pair of urchins, half a dozen. Is it raining, grubby children? The glint of a knife from above. Jack. Go. Jack be nimble. We give chase. This Jack must be a thief or a steep deeple Jack. He leaps ably from rooftop to rooftop, swinging on chimney pots and dashing through plumes of coal smoke. He dodges out of sight. Seconds later, a worn carpenter's knife flashes past our ear and sails downward to clatter on the cobblestones. This Jack would be difficult. Hmm, not sure if that was worth five actions, but onward. And Jack of Smiles is here, too. A rat-haunted back alley in the tangle of doss houses and brothels behind the docks. A shadow passes over us. Jack! A roar of alarm and a scream, each from different buildings. Jack and Jack. We race up the stairs into a doss house. The inhabitants, Burley Docker Zoll, have Jack cornered in a brandishing fire irons, and in one case a chamber pot. A scream from behind us. We dash out into the landing. It came from next door, but buildings lean toward each other with excessive familiarity here. We leap through the open window, straight into the cheap bordello. Jack's here, too, practicing his bloody craft with a flensing knife and a bouncer. Later, when both of them have been dispatched by the dockside residents and ourselves, we're given to wonder. Two jacks. That could change everything. Onward. The Revolutionaries, Jack and the Candlestick. A substantial cell of anarchists is hiding out in the flit after a failed bombing. The word is that Jack intervened. Jack's are gone. I don't know what you heard from the city below, but that ain't what happened. The truth is our brother was checking his gear before the mission. Bomb, revolver, knife, rope. And all sudden like he started stabbing around. He caught me a nasty one in the shoulder, the villain. Then he grabbed the bomb and ran off. Sounds daft, but it was like he became Jack of Smiles himself. I'd never seen the like of the thing. That's how Jack works, isn't it? What? Okay. Onward. And now, hunting that which was Jack. The case notes we have imply that someone who was Jack lived through the experience and recovered their wits. Who are you? Someone out there was Jack of Smiles. Someone was powerful or well-known enough to warn a cover-up. Tricky, but we'll find them. Formerly known as Jack, this former Jack of Smiles didn't leave much of a trail, but we reasoned that they would have fled through exile and tomb colonies and ship captains keep records. We were there nearly a week in the oily dockside archives before we found him. 
The reformed Hellraiser is now a leading industrialist and a part owner of the great Downward Engineering Company. His family were mill owners before the fall. He's a little middle class to be truly influential, but he's not short a few echoes. He doesn't wish to be reminded of those days, but he agreed when we pointed out his civic duty and promised to continue to keep his name off the case notes. The reformed Hellraiser takes a hearty gulp of sherry before he speaks. To be honest, I don't really remember much of that time, and that's not the effect of the years I don't remember back then. I just don't remember back then. I just found myself in the tomb colonies with an awful lot of my former friends very angry with me. They had to explain to me what had happened. I'd just gone berserk in the wood room one afternoon. No warning. My family spent half their fortune covering it up. They tell me I killed four people, one of them for good. But I don't remember any of that. All I remember is the knife. It was a raggedy old blunt thing. Not like the rest of the wood room tools. I must have picked it up. I don't remember anything after that. Onward. He remembers nothing of his time as Jack, save for a dull knife. And through connections alone, we've made it here. Jack's knife. It's not hard to obtain a murder weapon. Track of Smiles likes to use knives. Whether they're bayonets, butchers, cleavers, or flick knives, Jack does love his little blades. Finding a knife. This knife was used by Jack last week. Ten inches long, wooden copper fittings. The sort of thing a fisherman might carry. Now, what to do with it? Found him. The tip of this blade is snapped off. Blood. The handle is worn. It's not particularly sharp. Cut the little pieces. Not the weapon one would, one would choose for lunatic rampage. Revenge. Blood. We fling the knife away and it clatters to the floor. We've handled Jack's knives before, but never for this long. That's it. It's the knives. Jack's and the knives. Please read. We're about to ask and make a decision about Jack and the knives. Please read the text carefully so the options won't be to everyone's taste. We will murder everyone. Two ways to Jack. The knives, the key, and the Jack of Smiles case. Hmm. Two ways forward. I'd like to become Jack, but then I couldn't share it with you. Ah, let me check it out. Just a second. Well, no answer yet, but I suppose I'll just bring you guys along. More detective work. We've got more sense than to touch that knife again. Wrap it in a rag and back to the evidence covered with it. We'll stick with proper detective work. Put safely away. We locked the evidence cupboard. There are dozens of knives in there. Do they still have the principle that we just experienced? Best not to think about it, but how to proceed now. The knives vary in form and age and material, but none of them are expensive. There's no master cutler or weaponsmith to call on, but we'll think of something. So I'm going to go ahead and continue drawing opportunities because there are a few that I'd like to show you guys. That one is for elsewhere. Nope. So just on the, on the treadmill again. Back soon. And in between jacks, I pulled myself an unsigned message and we succeeded. Which means we have a surprise package. I'm not sure if I've opened one of these at high level with you guys before. This bundle of oddities can go all the way to the top. The paper slides aside. Escape from the Ministry of Public Decency. Unwrap it carefully. London Street Signs. Forbidden goods. There's a manifesto of sorts, too, crudely printed. This is not our city. This is its crouching corpse. This is the shell accreted around it. We are overwritten by the masters. They will forget us down into the ground. They will make of us lacquer. The streets are dead. But let us remember them. Chalk their old names high. And the marine be remembered in flame. That was valuable. Onward. Back to Jack. We hope no one understands what we have here. The evidence cupboard contains enough of Jack's knives to kill half of London. We have to keep them out of the wrong hands. Which is any hands. Look to the humble tradesman. The markets of spite boast a score of knife sharpeners, shiv makers, and cutlers. One of them will know something. The lives of knives. The knives are too dangerous to transport, especially to a place like Spite. So we use up a good portion of our expense allowance to bring the cutlers and knife sharpeners to us. They're not keen on being searched on the way out, but we can't take any chances with these things. No money silences complaints handily. Six sharpeners and four cutlers later, and a pattern's emerging. The knives are up to twenty years old. A few bear maker's marks. Four different marks only. 
nobody local. The blades are cheap steel with ash or cedar handles and copper or brass fittings. There's something else. One of the cutlers mentions the clay puppeteer. Not many clay men would take up entertaining children, but this one is a talent with the lives of small objects. His puppet show is, apparently, summit to see, even if it is blade not natural like Hmm. Onward. The Clay Puppeteer. It doesn't take us long to track down the tatty, rat-eaten booth of the Clay Puppeteer. On natural vitality, we wait through the show. The voices are awful. We suspect we know how the Puppeteer operates six marionettes at once. At last... The clay puppeteer is cracked and worn. Have you ever seen an older-looking clay man? He doesn't even ask to be paid when he agrees to look over the collection of Jack's knives. We're nervous about letting a huge brute like the clay puppeteer touch the knives, but there's no other way. He runs a stony finger over a few handles, barely touching them. His voice has long lost the typical clay rumble. The puppeteer says quietly, They were alive, in a way that I am and you are not. And they're furious. I don't think that there's anything to be done for them. The poor things. I'd like to tell you they're after s you're, that you're after some mad clay weaponsmith. But the strange thing is that they were made by different hands. Human hands at that, I think. But they do have that spark. Vitality. They have to be from Polythreme. Huh, interesting. That's actually what I anticipated, and I can't remember whether that's because I heard about it before or not. However we came here, we are now sure. We had two jack options on these cards, but I guess we might not have to play them. Jack of Smiles is the result of a set of knives. Knives with more personality than Cutlery should have. Knives from Polythreme. Tell the inspector. We'll have to go to Polythreme to get to the bottom of this. But we should report in first. Expenses. The knuckle-scarred inspector drums his fingers against the edge of his cluttered desk. Polly free, mate. Please, no. Well, you're doing all right so far. I was expecting you to have ended up as Jack by now and all. Bloody good show there. So what are you hanging about for? These feet need to be foiled. We cough off and mention expenses. The inspector's brow furrows, but he can't really argue. Right, I'll get you a chip for some silk. I've heard them fancy Polly Freem types like a drop of that. Well, looks like we're done with Jack of Smiles for now. Up next, we'll be hitting the Z and heading out to Far Polythreme. See you soon.